Minfilia, am I right? None other. I bid you welcome to Revenant's Toll, and thank you for traveling so far on such short notice. <laughs> As if I could ever say no to Uriange. Moonbreeder is an accomplished Charlian scholar and an authority on etherite technologies. She has played an invaluable role in our search for a means to capture Asian souls. Charmed, I'm sure. Moon! Gods, it's been ages! Oh, longer, sister! A joyous reunion indeed. Well, of course it is. Moon and I are like twin sisters. Save in appearance and aptitude. Everyone, if I could have your attention. We have with us an esteemed guest who has come from Jalian to assist us. I bid Moonbreeder join us here that she might share with us her extensive knowledge of etherites. Also, as many of you are already aware, she has been overseeing our research into white orosite, a sample of which she has been good enough to bring with her. Well, I had to come, didn't I? You'd have to be bloody daft to turn your nose up at a chance like this. Where better to conduct my final tests than a land so steep to neither you can taste it? Tis plain the passage of the years hath done little to dampen thy youthful spirits. And nothing at all to reform thy youthful manner. Where in the hells have you been hiding? Uh, unhand me. I come all this way, and that's what you have to say to me. I much preferred when you were pleading with me to drop everything and hurry to your side. What was it you said? None save thee can satisfy this need. Go on. Thine artless attempts to misrepresent mine all too innocent motives do thee little credit. <clears throat> mine intent, as well thou knowest, was but to impress upon thee the gravity of the circumstance. Lest thou doubt, a deiform entity shall shortly be summoned, save if thou and no other grantest my compeers thine aid. You still haven't found it, then, your missing etherite? We have not. No. We know that Iceheart teleported to an etherite not far from the first. Yet even after careful analysis, we could not locate the second beacon. We now suspect that the heretics destroyed the second etherite to impede our pursuit. Our allies continue to scour Snowcloak for Iceheart Sanctuary, but we have no guarantee that they will find it. Yet it must be found. For even now, Iceheart prepares to call upon Saint Shiva. I'm sorry, but if the Aetherite's been destroyed, then that's that. Although, you're absolutely sure she used the first Aetherite, are you? She didn't just use teleportation magics? One of our own bore witness to her escape. I can say with absolute certainty that Iceheart used the Aetherite. In that case, there might be a way, so long as the ethereal current is still flowing. Truly? How? We use the current to recreate the beacon. As you know, etherites are a bit like lighthouses. 
We use them to reconstitute our physical forms when crossing the ethereal sea. Without them, we'd lose all sense of direction and our essence would dissipate. However, we don't rely solely on these beacons. There are currents of ether which flow between them, currents which help guide us to our destination. Now, these currents will gradually dwindle away to nothing if an etherite is destroyed. But, if even a sluggish flow remains, we could theoretically use it to direct a surge of concentrated ether towards the void left by the beacon, and thereby fill it up again. Like opening the floodgates to fill a dry riverbed. Though, correct me if I'm wrong, but would we not need a veritable reservoir of ether? In concert, we might manage to channel a sufficient volume, yet that is not my chief concern. To direct the flow of so great a volume of ether with the requisite precision would be a nigh-impossible task in itself. I barely succeeded in facilitating travel to an unattuned beacon. That which you describe sounds considerably more difficult. And dangerous! Every person who has attempted to teleport in this fashion has died in the process. They, however, did not have white aura sight at their disposal. I can use it to channel all the ether you can give me into the etherite. However, white aura sight cannot retain ether for an extended period of time, so we would need to infuse it immediately beforehand. Just so you know, I'd confidently give this plan better than even odds of success. And if the worst comes to worst, your people won't suffer. Though it risk the lives of our best and brightest, we have not the time to seek other options. If the ethereal current still flows, we shall carry out Moonbreeder's plan. That's the spirit. Let's roll the dice! You should never have come here, warrior of light. I labor only to forge a lasting peace. A peace you would deny us out of ignorance and blind faith. No matter. If it is our fate to be at odds, then it is mine to strike you down. We who gods and men have forsaken shall be the instruments of our own deliverance. 
partake of my flesh. Fill this vessel with your light. Walk amongst your brothers and sisters once more. Oh, Saint Shiva, still the hatred within our hearts and bless us with eternal grace. Fool. Blind, bloody fool. You, of all people, should understand the suffering war begets. That no sacrifice is too great if it brings an end to the violence. Mine is the righteous cause. You fight in a war you do not understand. A pawn of liars and schemers. And they are no less ignorant than you. Following the creed of their fathers without question, never thinking to ask why. Trapped in a delusion of their own creation and blind to the truth. Warrior of Light, redemption is not beyond us. We who walk before may lead those who walk after. Seek the Keeper of the Lake, see with eyes unclouded. Do, do not squander Mother's gift. And so the vessel withdraws, a predictable outcome. Nevertheless, La Habrea will be pleased. How unfortunate. On behalf of the Holy See of Ishgard, allow me to express my deepest thanks. Never before have we been required to contend with a primal. Indeed, there were fears in some quarters that our knights might not be equal to the task. From what we have now learned of these beings, I can say with certainty that we would have lost a great many men had the Scions not intervened. Then the argument for preemptive action should be self-evident. Perchance now you will reconsider my proposal that Ishgard move against Natalan. Ere we first met, a similar proposal was tabled, but the Holy See decreed that we were to observe and that military action should be taken only in self-defense. All things considered, it was not an unreasonable decision. 
Since the calamity, two vigils have fallen to the Horde, while Garuda has never shown any inclination to storm the Gates of Judgment. Which is why this unprecedented crisis and its resolution may prompt a change in policy. You who have faced these primals know well the threat they pose. Ishgard did not. Not until now. And there is naught like a brush with death to change a man's outlook. At the very least, this should silence any lingering objections to our arrangement with Revenant's toll. The Holy See may even feel moved to grant us its formal endorsement. So far as it is possible, the Scions shall be compensated for their service. We should be grateful for any aid you can provide. As a gesture of good faith, I shall withdraw my previous request. Your people are doubtless needed elsewhere. That will not be necessary. We too have a vested interest in watching Dravania's movements. I see. Once more, I must thank you. Sir Emmerich, if I may, do you truly believe that Midgard Zoma could return? The heavens are a window unto truth, but those who interpret their movements are not infallible. I requested your involvement as a precautionary measure. But of course! You sought an excuse to compensate us from the first, mindful of what would happen if Revenant's toll were taken by your enemies. Ishgard is not wont to aid its neighbors, but that does not preclude it from manipulating them to serve its own interests. Choose your next words carefully. Do you know what sort of man becomes Lord Commander of the Temple Knights? One who comes from good stock. I did not. Yet here I am. Now, why do you suppose that is? Because I swiftly learned to tell the difference between words, deeds, and beliefs. You are correct, Master Leveo. Ishgard desires to see Revenant's toll flourish, as it would present a troublesome obstacle to our enemies from the south. We are so glad to be of use to you. As we are to you. Ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement, lest we forget. One born of necessity. The dragons grow more restless by the day, and the heretics harry us nigh without cease. We have contended with such troubles for centuries, but there are limits to even our endurance. Yet as a pauper is loath to part with his meager possessions, the leaders of Ishgard are not wont to render up their trust to outsiders. But with perseverance on our part, they may yet be made to see the light. Nevertheless, one must take care when walking the road less traveled. Wise words, Sir Emmerich. I shall make a point to remember them. I must apologize for my earlier outburst. I hope it will not sour our good relations. Not at all. You but spoke from the heart. I trust you understand that at times my duties may prevent me from meeting with you. On such occasions, my second-in-command will speak for me. Lucia, at your service. Pray excuse our reticence. We are but wary of speaking too freely, lest our sentiments be made known to our enemies. Know that the Lord Commander and I are of one mind. For the sake of Ishgard, and of Eorzea at large, I pray our peoples can put aside their differences. Those who dwell in the past risk losing sight of their future. Should aught befall one of our shipments, pray inform Lucia immediately. You may also relay to her any words you might have for me alone. Not being of Ishgardian birth, she owes no allegiance to any noble house, making her as near to incorruptible as one confined in my homeland. Suffice it to say, I trust her completely, and so may you. Which reminds me, Lord Orshafon, if you would be so kind? Certainly. 
In times such as these, trust is ever in short supply. Mayhap this will go some way to rectify the problem. The results of our investigation into the heretic's recent attacks, as well as our interrogation of the merchant you detained. Sir Emmerich, I cannot thank you enough. Think nothing of it. Ishgard may be many things, but it is no friend to Garlemald. Did I not tell you to have faith, my friend? <laughs>